Nilsson next to him. Here is the lineup panel on the inside. Nilsson, who was beaten but narrowly by panel's greatest opponent, Dave Jessup, in his opening ride. Egon Muller from West Germany, who can really always do something a bit outrageous, unpredictable in grid three. And Oli Olsen, two points under his belt from his opening ride on the outside. So one panel hit the traps again. Heat number seven. Long time to settle. And it's Olsen from the outside and Nelson and Pedals in third place and he's powering through now on the inside. He's up under Olsen. Will Olsen be able to hold him out? They hit the pit corner together. And again, it is Olsen, the old dog, who can still show them a few tricks. Olsen leads it. Can Pennell find the drive? Can he find the line? Can he find the power to come from the back? And he's in some trouble rearing there. And Olsen is stretching it. Well, the battle is thoroughly joined now. In third place, it's Miller. And Olsen showing all his skill around Remley. He really has got a tiger on his tail. He looked quickly back over his shoulder as Panel switches to try and find the outside drive. There's a bit of dirt out there. And Panel, very spectacular, swings back inside him. Olsen has read him. And he's getting very tight. And Olsen again has shut down and left the gap. And they're both in trouble on the outside. <laughs> there really is, and he hits it. Well, what a race. Panel again swinging outside. Can he find the drive? I don't think he's going to make it. Or is he? Up on the line. And he's just moved Panel. Oh, what a ride! What a ride from Panel! It seemed that his pace was totally lost on the last lap there. It looked like he had no chance, but he seemed to find drive from nowhere. The power was unbelievable, and he just got up by what about half a wheel there on Olsen. Well, that was a sensational world final heat, surely, Bruce Panel. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty intense for me too, but uh, Ollie was, he had me covered every which way, but. Uh, well, I let's just, show you the last bit of a tremendous race. Well, I got uh, out, in the, out in the dirt just a little bit. I just got my rear wheel in the dirt a little bit and I tried to get those wheels in line as much as I could. I chopped back underneath him at first and uh, he had me covered there all the way. So uh, I had to try to make the dive on the outside in the last lap and it just worked. But uh, Ollie and I both, we both lifted at the same time, we drifted out just a little bit, and we both lifted, hit a little bit of a grippy spot, as you can see. So I had to shut off a little bit, or else I would have hit him. But uh, definitely a good heat. Uh, I think all I knew, I was back there. <laughs> I just got out in the dirt and got my wheels in line just a little bit before he did, and just had a nice long drive to the right across the finish line. Bruce, tremendous finish. Well done. Thank you. They've completed two rides apiece, and there is the leaderboard with, as all the experts expected, Dave Jessup and Bruce Panel unbeaten on six apiece. Kenny Carter, Eric Gunderson, and Tommy Nudson, the younger brigade, all still in with a shout on five points each. Ole Olsen, the veteran, on four points, and then a trio of riders on three apiece. Jan Anderson from Sweden, Michael Lee, and Chris Morton from England. There is Panel, who will be on the outside. He's going to have to match Jessup's starting power. Although Bruce is by no means starting himself. And we've seen that uh, he can really produce the goods from the back. Jessup has really had to work hard from the rear, relying entirely on his starting prowess so far. And the crowd are behind him. There's no question. Virtually a capacity. Perfect conditions. The track has been conducive to good racing, and that's a compliment to Len Silver. The Hackney and England boss who has been working, indeed sweating blood over this track. It's a credit to him. Panel. Is that a nervous moment for him? Is it psychology? The start, of course, is going to be oh so very important here in Heat 9. Panel on the outside. Jessup's in grid two. And have a look at the full lineup from the inside. It's Zenon Clack next to him. Jessup, grid three. Jan Sars on the outside. Panel, Heat 9. The race that may well wrap up the 1981 World Championship. Jessup in blue. Bruce Panel in yellow and black. Heat 9. Panel looks as though he's got the jump. Panel's away. Jessup's in second place. Now then, 
The battle really is on. Bruce Pennell made a tremendous start. Jessup is second. Third place is set in play. But now Jessup's got to find something very special. And can Dave Jessup for England find that extra bit of drive, that extra grip, that extra something to catch the flying American, the American Express, Bruce Pennell? And Jessup has not gained a length on him so far. But that was a much better corner, though. Pennell gets his wheels back in line, drifting a little wide there. Cannot afford to make a single slip. Jessup's right on his tail now as we move into the last lap. Pennell rather drifted a bit here. Don't think he's going to make the same mistake again. And Jessup really is on his back wheel and making his supreme efforts around the last two corners. I don't think he's going to catch him, in fact he stopped, and that's terrible luck for Dave Jessup. Oh my word, when is his world final luck going to change? On the last lap there, his machine gave up the ghost, panel went over the line, in the yellow and black helmet colour, there is Dave Jessup, and really and truly your heart goes out to him. An engine failure robbed him of the 1978 world title, no question about that, and now another engine failure, well, may well have robbed him of the crown in 1981. Dave Jeffrey, could I just ask you what went wrong with your engine in that race, please? Well, we had a carburetor problem, but I don't particularly want to talk on the telly about things that keep going wrong, you know. I'd rather go and talk to somebody who's winning. Well, the thing is, when we were last here in 78, the last Wembley final, you were going so well, David, and you had engine trouble then. Yeah, well, that's true. Uh, yeah, I don't have an awful lot of luck, but... I mean, you were in with a great chance there, you and Pennell, weren't you? And then suddenly the engine's gone down on you again. Well, we was having a, you know, a terrific race and, you know, he was beating me fair and square, but, like, I was challenging for it and, yeah, a little bit more luck. Later on in the evening, he may drop one more and, uh, and I'll be back in with a shout, but uh, now, possibly not. Oh, we've had some surprises. We've had some superb racing already. This is Heat 10. We wonder if possibly we could have any more drama because... Uh, it's just reeled off. It's been a bit of a saga already, and we're only halfway through. Anderson on the inside, three points. Kenny Carter, now perhaps England's main hope for this title with Dave Jessup seemingly his chance gone. Hans Nielsen, grid three. Tommy Newton, the young man from Denmark, who's collected five from his first two items. Here we go. Heat number ten. who will show Carter in front, second place is Anderson, they're all swinging wide and Newton's come around the curb and almost caught them all napping, but not Kenny Carter. Carter leads it, second place Anderson battling, third place now in fact is Anderson because uh, it was Newton who got by and now the two youngsters are showing them all the way home. Tremendous battle going on, Carter on the outside in blue, Newton is in second place in yellow and black, third place Anderson, Nielsen's at the back, Carter from Halifax. What a brave young lad this is. He broke his jaw in eight places back in April. Was riding five weeks later. Doesn't seem to have slowed him down one jot. Into the last lap, Knudsen is after him. Second place. And Carter, what a talented young man he is. Looking around, breaks his hand. Oh, I think he's beckoning to Ivan Major. that something's wrong or something's up, but that, <laughs> that was really cool. Carter wins it, second place Knudsen, third was Anderson. And we can only back to conjecture what uh, Kenny Carter was gesticulating about on that last lap. Heat number 11, and the angle here surely is, can Michael Lee, reigning world champion, possibly pick up the pieces from a disastrous opening ride and get into the places here in this 81 world final. The lineup for Heat 11, it is Chris Morton on the inside. Red helmet colour, Michael Lee, grid two, Olsen on the Olsen of course, by the old campaigner in grid three, and Yuri Stansel from Czechoslovakia, nobody's full on the outside in yellow and black. Michael Lee has moved well to the outside of grid two to try and get a better line obviously up to the first corner. Paul Johnson, Steve Marshall, 
more. Everybody's in line. Here we go. He's 11. And uh, it's Olsen who gets in front, and Michael Lee almost seemed to stop there going into the first corner. They all level up together. Olsen in front of his second, third is Chris Morton. Pedali Olsen from Denmark. Morton and Lee having a rare ding dong for second place. Michael Lee, we heard, had changed machines after his opening ride. Doesn't look so comfortable this time, though. He won his second race. But Olsen is by no means out of this World Championship. And Morton's coming back on the outside where he loves to swoop and sweep. And he's going to do it again on Michael Lee, I think, unless Lee just edges him out of the corner. I don't think he's quite got the horsepower. Chris Morton, oh, he's just too wide and let Lee back on the inside. It's a fair speedway, though, and again Morton will try the outside run. See Olsen in front. He's in second place. Then Morton will try to find some extra drive around the outside. Olsen though looks like he's well set in heat 11 despite the persistent buzzing from Chris Morton. Michael Lee's going to finish second. Chris Morton, he deserved a lot more than one point there back in third place. And Olsen, when all the scrapping and ducking and diving was going on behind, collects three more points. That takes him onto seven. Still even a chance for place in this frame. Bruce Tannell, the clear leader, unbeaten on nine points. Kenny Carter from England, though, breathing right down his neck on eight points. In joint third place, the two Danes, Tommy Knudsen and Ole Olsen, on seven apiece. Dave Jessup, so unlucky, on six points. And then we have three riders on five points. Eric Gunderson from Denmark, he was unlucky too. Michael Lee, the reigning champion. And uh, Egon Muller from West Germany, just putting his nose into the picture as well. Well, these are nerve-wracking moments for Bruce Pennell, the only unbeaten rider in the field, of course, from Anaheim, California, bidding to become the first American in 44 years to win the World Speedway Crown. He already has a share in the World Pairs Championship. We saw that in Poland on ITV with partner Bobby Schwartz. Pennell on the outside here. This is his fourth ride, clear favourite now. And he has some opposition from the inside there. Tommy Lutzen from Denmark, joint third overall. He has been a surprise packet. Alice Trimble's in grid two, Chris Morton from England disappointing in grid three, Bruce Pennell on the outside, some of the stadium lights appear to have just uh, gone out in case you're getting a dimmer picture, we just hope that isn't going to affect uh, the bright lights for Bruce Pennell on the outside, Newton on the inside, the danger man in red, Trimble's in grid two, Chris Morton hasn't made a start all nights in grid three, Pennell unbeaten on the outside, heat number 14. Nell biting down there as they settle for the start of heat 14. And again, it is Pennell from the outside. And Knudsen's drifted across and Pennell has spotted the move and picked him off as clean as a whistle, or has he? Knudsen's come back under him and this is sensational speedway. So Knudsen leads it. Pennell in all kinds of trouble back in second place. But that really was absolutely terrific action around the first lap. And Knudsen it is, what a surprise pack at this young man. He's in front, second place panel having to work very hard. Can he possibly regain the ground? We saw him earlier come from the back in the most startling fashion against Ole Olsen. And now he's gaining again on Tommy Knudsen. Now around the outside again, trying to find the drive. Knudsen's looking for him. They're into the last lap, just 344 metres of weather to go. And here comes Pennell again. And I think he's going to go round him. They're absolutely level, neck and neck, elbow to elbow. And Pennell is stretching him. Pennell's gone by. And has he done him? It's on the line. And it's absolutely neck and neck. Who's going to sort that one out? I think Pennell might just have got up by about the width of a tyre. But it was again a Speedway classic. The whole crowd are holding their breath here. It was a real tight one. And it is Pennell! Well, Bruce Pennell, if you're going to win this world title, and it's looking that way now, you aren't half doing it the hard way. Let me tell you, it was hard, and uh, I, just start, I just started going for it. I, I'm just happy to get around him. Well, it was a sensational start again. Now, tell us about this. Well, I didn't make it. I sort of lifted a little bit to the first corner. Uh, Tommy jumped a little bit on me, but... Uh, I just sort of lifted a little bit, you know, and 
Tommy was going to take me up. I think he thought I was going to go up high. So I shot back underneath him and made a good first corner. But uh, I think Tom, I thought Tommy was a little bit too far out to come back. And I might have just taken it easy a little bit too much. But uh, he got a good drive coming out of that second corner and really good drive. And actually, I couldn't believe it when he went by me. What happened then at the end? Well, I thought, shoot, I better start working a little bit harder than this because he started pulling on me a little bit. But I started working a little bit harder. And I was going out a little bit beyond where I wanted to be, you know, because there's just searching for dirt out there. It's just hard to get, but uh, it was there when I needed it. Only one step away now. One step away, one heat. I just hope I can put it together in my last one. So heat 15 coming up. And again, this looks like being a real bundle of mischief. We've got Dave Jessup, so unlucky on six points, but could still squeeze into the frame. Ollie Olsen on seven. Eric Gunderson, another lucky man, unlucky man on five points. And Kenny Carter, second place overall. You can see Bruce Pennell pulling up all the trees. But Carter needs a win here to stay in touch, and he's still got to meet Pennell in the last race, so heat 15 with an awful lot to race for. Here we go, Jessup, Olsen, Gunderson, Carter. That's how they line up from the inside. Heat number 15. Jessup's going to get away again, and I think Carter's going to be squeezed out on the first corner. Jessup leads it. In second place, it's going to be Carter. Or is it going to be Olsen around the curve? I think it's Carter who's just got the drop. Jessup in front. Carter is second. Third place now. Gunderson's making his move. And Gunderson has come around the outside of both Olsen and Carter. And somebody seems to be popping and missing out there. It's difficult to see who it is. Jessup's in front again. Gunderson has made his way up. It looks like Carter's the one in trouble. And Carter has given up the ghost, and again the drama unfolds in large dollops here at Wembley. Jessup in front, Gunderson second, third is Olsen, and Carter, we've lost him, and that's a disaster for the Yorkshire kid and indeed for English Speedway. Gunderson still making ground on Jessup, so he's come into the last lap of Wembley, you just see, and it looks like Jessup's in trouble as well. Well, what could possibly happen next? Gunderson moves up from last to first. We have lost Carter, we have now lost Dave Jessup. We're going to get two finishes only. There is Jessup, unless he wishes to push home. It is a long way home. The winner is Gunderson. <laughs> and second was Olsen. And Dave Jessup is right under our commentary position. There's the winner, Gunderson. There's David Jessup. And he wonders, he must surely be wondering. He must have run over half a million black cats and there's Gunderson stopping to give him a lift back to the pits. David Jessup not even interested in pushing for the odd point. Who can really blame him? But a nice touch from Gunderson. A lot of camaraderie at top level in this world final. And what a world final it's been for Jessup. It must be a nightmare out there. Well, to the background bustle in the pits, they've all got one ride left, but you can see Bruce Pennell from America, high, wide and handsome, and now three points clear on 12 points, unbeaten. Tommy Knudsen and Oli Olsen from Denmark jointly in second place on nine. Kenny Carter from England on eight, so too is Eric Gunderson. Jan Anderson and Egon Muller, the Continental Challenge down there on seven points apiece. Dave Jessup, well, he's on six points, had an awfully unlucky evening. Michael Lee on five, and so too is England's Chris Morton. Well, there is a pensive Bruce Pennell. It must be said that he's ridden magnificently, but luck has favoured him. His main rivals seem to have fallen by the wayside and been upset. And there, in fact, is his world, world pairs partner, Bobby Schwartz. They were school chums back in California. And Bobby, I know, has been up in the stands. The excitement is getting to him, I think, come down just to see Bruce surely now consolidate. He only needs one point from his last ride, but he really must be biting his nails now. Heat 18 of a world final, which has been rich in excitement and uh, almost theatrical in its drama. And Heat 18 still has one or two questions to answer as well. We've got Michael Lee on the inside, the reigning world champion, seeing his title retakes and chances just fritter away here. Tommy Knudsen from Denmark, been a marvellous debutant in world finals. He's got a total of nine points, so a win here will make him certainly on the rostrum there's Knudsen and he can finish on 12 points we must remember of course Pennell just needs one from his last ride Lee on the inside then Knudsen looking desperately for a win grid three Muller on the outside Jessup here we go for heat number 18 
Knudsen it is who has gets gets to hit the corner in front. Knudsen leads it, though Lee has tried to find a hole down the inside. Tommy Knudsen in front for Denmark. Second place, Michael Lee. Third is Egon Müller, and Lee has gone through on the inside there. And Knudsen has returned the compliment down the back straight, and it's not an awful lot to choose. And Dan has gone Michael Lee into the fence, and that really completes an evening that Michael Lee will want to forget very, very quickly. Lutzen leaves it now in second place, it's Miller. Dave Jessup's in third place. And while the English folks have fallen one by one, it's been a marvellous night, of course, for these talent. We're still going to wrap it up. The Danes, we knew we were going to be lively. And Tommy Lutzen now is just one lap away of a certain place on the roster here at Wembley. Lutzen. Danes in the crowd, salute this young man, what a prospect he is, over the line, three points for him on his back wheel, second was Muller, third was Jessup, who really must be past caring now, and there is Knudsen, and he really has been the most attractive competitor in this, his first world final, the youngest rider in the field, only 19 years, 10 months, and we are really going to see a lot more of this kid, and there is last year's world champion, Taking the long hike back, a night he'll want to forget and surely a season he'll want to forget too. Michael Lee, can I just ask you what the problem oh, yeah. was there in the end? Yeah, I should have chain going into the bend. I got by Tommy and chain jumped off going in the bend. I had no choice but to jump off the damn thing, so... Well... well there you go. <laughs> the line-up for the race that should sort out the World Championship in 1981. Kenny Carter on the inside from England, Yuri Stach of Czechoslovakia, Bruce Pennell, the man they'll really cheer home. What a popular champion he will be. He's just got to sit on and make sure of a third place. And on the outside, Larry Ross from New Zealand. Well, Bruce really must be sweating that the bike will keep going. He mustn't do anything daft here. Remember, of course, back in 1951, Jack Biggs in a similar situation, made a hash of his last ride and eventually finished third overall. Bruce has just got to be a sensible lad. Will he try to go out in a real blaze of glory and win it and go through the card? Could be in character with the man. Here we go, heat 20. And Pennell's away, and so too is Carter. And it's Pennell and Carter together now. Bruce has just got to stay sensible now. Carter leads it. Pennell's coming round into second place. And third place is Sherry Stansel. And will Bruce Pennell, the American glamour boy, just be content to sit back and let Kenny Carter do all the heavy stuff up front? Or will he try to come powering through as we've seen him twice before and win the title as a maximum man? Certainly making sure Carter doesn't go to sleep. Sit tight now for another 344 metres. Carter stretching away now. Pennell surely is in no danger unless the bike comes up or he has a complete rush of blood and does something outstandingly stupid. He's not going to do that. He's far too bright, this boy. Carter's going to win it. But we're going to have an American world champion. It's going to be Bruce Pennell going over the line on his back wheel. There he goes. And Pennell it is. The people's choice for champion. Bruce Pennell from the United States of America is the pin-up World Speedway Champion of 1981. And there is Peter Adams, his team boss, and now the celebrations begin. Schwartz in there, they're doing a jig of joy, there's Harry Oxley, I can see the American provider, of course, the American stage, this final, the crowd, they're coming from all directions, the cameramen are down there, Bruce Pennell is champion, my word, he'd be delighted, and there's his security teammate, his fans in the crowd, and there's a lot of them, are absolutely raising Wembley's roof, well, normally the riders get back to the pits before the celebrations begin, but Pennell really could well be the most popular champion of all.
He's got the American flag. The British people have taken him to their hearts because he's such a wonderful ambassador, such a great image-conscious rider, a showman, and really a tremendously popular world speed supremo.